How's it going everybody? Jesse Patella here with Redefine FX and today I want to share a bunch of tips for making your destruction simulations more realistic. So first you have to think about how things are actually constructed in the real world. So I know that the glass should be attached to the window frames and the window frames should be attached to the building. If you don't attach anything to anything you're gonna end up with results like this where everything just immediately shatters. But once you go through the process of attaching the objects to each other, you're going to end up with much more realistic results. On the same note, you also have to apply different destruction settings to different materials. So in this example, I know that the bus stop frame is made out of metal. That's why it's bending over instead of easily breaking, while the glass in between is just breaking very easily. And the plexiglass roof is staying attached much more to the metal and just sort of moving along with the destruction. If I were to just treat the bus stop like everything is made out of the same material and fracture everything the same way, I would end up with much worse looking result. It also really helps to present the destruction inside of a real environment, even if it's very simple. A lot of times people will show off their destruction setups in a blank viewport like this, which is fine, but putting it into an environment makes it that much more believable to the audience, even if it's just an imported building model and nothing else. On the same note, you have to have something in the scene that communicates the scale of what's happening to the audience. So just to make a point, I imported these two palm trees and all of a sudden my explosion is looking like a big bonfire. But as soon as I show it on the street, I'm getting across that it is in fact a huge explosion. So there has to be some kind of an object for the human brain to comprehend how big things actually are. Next up, whenever you're using Voronoi Fracture, the pieces may appear random, but actually when you zoom out, they all end up looking about the same. So your number one goal when you're using Voronoi Fracture is to hide the fact that you're using Voronoi Fracture. So what I did over here is I added lots of very small pieces of glass. I also have some large pieces up here that aren't completely broken. And I've added lots of conditions that break the glass depending on how hard it's been hit by the car, how fast it's moving and the material that it's made out of. So I have some big pieces of relatively unbroken window frames with the glass still attached to them and just trying to make it as random as I can and avoid repetition in the size of the destruction pieces. My next tip is don't underestimate just how much crap there is when a car crash or some kind of destruction happens in real life. So I've added a lot of these little mechanical pieces that are flying off the car. So as the car is rolling, there's just these little pieces falling on the road and flying all over the place, which helps a lot sell the whole thing to the audience. If you've ever witnessed the aftermath of a car crash in real life, it takes them hours to clean up all of the stuff that ends up on the road. On the same note, you really want to get used to setting up multiple simulations for one destruction shot. So on top of the main helicopter destruction, I also have a lot of additional debris. And then you want to ask yourself what small little details I can add that would really polish this up. So I just have maybe the wheel flying off the car, which is a separate simulation. In this shot, the front bumper flying off and hitting the tram is also a separate sim. So here's the bumper, it just nicely detaches and then it's its own simulation with some nice metal bending and pieces breaking off. I did it as a separate simulation because it allowed me to modify the settings just for the bumper separately. Next, definitely add dust and smoke wherever you can because it just helps blend the destruction into the environment so much. So this is what the shot looked like originally with no smoke. And I was convincing myself that I didn't need smoke because the car wasn't on fire, I was being lazy. But then this is what it looks like with the smoke. And especially as it's illuminated by the lights behind the smoke, it makes this nice aura around the whole destruction and helps make it feel like the destruction is actually happening right here. My next tip for you is to add variation to everything because by default everything is very uniform. And a lot of the operators in Typhlo have a variation setting. So you can add variation to the speed. You can maybe give it a little bit of divergence. You can also give random scale to the pieces of dirt, let's say. So I can set this to maybe 50% and increase their size. You can also give them some noise with the force operator, which also has a variation setting, which you can set to maybe 30%. 
Same thing for the slow operator. You can randomize how quickly they get slowed down. So maybe set this to 30%. And this way you can very quickly end up with a much more realistic result. And finally, I would say add sparks as much as you can, wherever it makes sense. So I added some sparks here as if the car is getting hit by bullets. I added these fireworks style sparks in this shot. And of course I added a lot of sparks around the bus stop destruction and I feel like it just improves the believability of the destruction so much. So I hope that you found all these tips helpful. If you'd like to learn how to set up all of the destruction scenes that I've been showing you from scratch, step by step, and create these visual effects shots really from nothing all the way to a finished shot, including lighting, compositing, rendering, then my new Typhlo masterclass called Torque is out. It's by far my most in-depth course that I've ever done. So many helpful tips and tricks and Typhlo knowledge and setups inside of this course. Even if you don't necessarily want to destroy and explode stuff, you just want to learn Typhlo. There are so many interesting Typhlo setups in this course for you to learn from and explore. The course is available now at redefinefx.com slash torque. The link is in the description. I'd love to see you inside the course. The whole thing is made in the same style of teaching that you're used to from this YouTube channel. Pretty short videos, straight to the point. Very easy to follow, even if you're a beginner. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.